So remember, semi-supervised learning is a case where we have a lot of unlabeled data and then we have little uh, part of this data has actually labels on. And this is what is illustrated in this two half moons example. So we have three data points with one from one class, with labels from one class, and then we have three data points with labels from the second class. And the idea now is that we have this, these two half moon clouds of unlabeled data and that should help us learn a suitable manifold. And if we run our method with these auxiliary variables I talked about before, then we can actually learn this labeling like this. So this is really what we want to do. And what we kind of explore here is that we explore information about that there's a density, that there's actually two disjoint densities in the data. And that gives us information about what regions should be connected also with respect to the labels. Yes. So in order to use our generative approach from before um, for this supervised and semi-supervised case, we need to expand our model to also include a label. Uh, so forget about this A thing here. This is this auxiliary variable I mentioned before, and you can read more about that in our ICML paper. Just think about the Y, X, and C variables. So if you look at, the, uh, at our generative model first, you can see we, we now have an expanded model where we say in order to generate an image, for example, an MNIST uh, image, then we decide on C, that could be our latent variable for the style of the image, and we decide on what uh, type of uh, image it would be a one, then we turn on the Y label uh, variable as one, and then these two uh, bits of information goes together to generate the X. So that's our generative model. So we separate the style, so that could be kind of how, how we what is the angle of the digit and the thickness of the pen is all collected in C and then the label information is collected in, in Y. And these two go together to generate the image. We can then also make uh, our, uh, our uh, encoder model uh, similar to this. So we say now that X, X uh, generates both uh, contributes to generating both the latent variable and the label. And in order to generate the latent variable, we need both the uh, uh, X and Y. So this is our generative model. And um, forget about A again. So in the semi-supervised case, uh, uh, we sometimes have Y for all the labeled, for all the 100 labeled data, we have the Y. So it's 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 not should not be treated as a as an unobserved variable, but in in the remainder of the cases we don't have the label and we should treat uh, y as as in the likelihood as a variable that we need to sum out right. So this is how we write down the likelihood. We need to marginalize all the things we have not observed. So for unlabeled data we have to marginalize both over C, which we do by an integral, and over Y, which is discrete, we, and we do that by a sum. And this is just some details to understand the next slide, because I will not talk any more about this. This is also a good uh, topic for, for a project in this course. But you can see in this table that if we compare our results, I showed this figure about semi-supervised MNIST before, you can see MNIST 100 examples there, we can actually get below 1% error and also on two other famous uh, 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 benchmarks, the, the Google Street View uh, house numbers and the NORP data set, we at least for some time had the world record in semi-supervised learning, uh, achieving these errors with only 1000 label data sets. And I should also say that recently there's been improvements by by a group from OpenAI on this uh, using the so-called uh, generative adversarial networks. But we plan, of course, to, to take back the world record in these semi-supervised learning tasks. Here are some references to, um, to uh, autoencoders and variational approaches. Um, thank you.